So in the last video we looked at using for to repeat things uh, a number of times. So if for example we wanted to print out the first 10 um, square numbers we could have a program like this. So I've created i as an integer, I've counted from 1 to 10 and I'm going to print i squared. So remember that means raised to the power of. So if I run this program what it should do is it will give me the first 10. But what about if I don't know how many there are. What about if I wanted to print out all the square numbers less than 250 for example? Well what I could do is I could use uh, while instead. So if you want to do things a repeated number of times but you don't know um, how many times, if you want to do things until a particular thing happens or while a particular condition is true then this is the way to do it. So what we would do is we would say uh, while and then we would say while I squared. So if we want to find all the numbers up to square numbers up to 250 say. So while uh, i squared is less than 250 um, then what we're going to do? Well notice he's put this end while in so just like um, for uh, we have a start of the repeated section and an end of the repeated section and in here we indent the bit that we want to um, repeat. So I'm going to repeat uh, console dot uh, right line and then I'm going to just print i squared. But the, the difference, the biggest difference between this and a for loop is that you need to increment, you need to increase the value of um, i yourself explicitly inside the loop. Because if I don't do this what it'll do is, um, well we, we need a starting value of i, don't we? So i uh, is equal to, uh, let's start at 1. So i squared will be 1 squared, so that'll be 1. Is 1 less than 250? Yes it is, so it'll print it. But then it'll just go around again. i hasn't changed, so it'll still be 1. Uh, so it'll still be less than 250, so it'll go around again. So what I actually need to do is I need to increase the value of i in here. So I can say i equals i uh, plus 1, and that adds 1 to the value of i. There is a uh, Visual Basic shortcut for that, which is i plus equals 1, so that just means add 1 to the value of i. So if I run that now, it'll keep going until I get to 250. I don't know how many square numbers there are less than 250, but it doesn't matter. There we go, we can see that um, it, it does that. One thing, Another thing you need to be a little bit careful of is your comparisons. So just make sure that you're doing you know, less than or less than or equal to. So for example, if I wanted to do the same thing as previously, I could do this. Um, but if I say less than 100, obviously that won't include 100. So that'll only go up to 81. But if I put less than or equal to, that would include uh, 100 because it will count up to and including the 100. So just be a little bit careful with your comparisons if your program isn't doing quite what you expected. Um, so we can do that. What about though if I, if I, if I made a typing mistake um, like that or I, in fact if I wanted to start at 11. Uh, let's run that program now and see what happens. So what happens now is actually nothing. So we need to be a little bit careful when we use while that we make sure that it runs at least once. So because when we get to i squared, i squared, 11 squared is 121, that's already more than 100. So this never runs at all. So it is possible with a while loop that it doesn't run at all. That's also possible with a for loop actually if the, uh, as we've seen, if the first number is bigger than the second number or is not greater than certainly. So we can do things like that where we don't know how many times we want to do it but we can keep going until something happens. It's also useful for things like um, validation. So if for example we wanted to um, make sure that the user gave us a positive number. So what we could do is this. We could say um, we're going to say, we're going to repeatedly ask the user for a positive number until they give us one. So we're going to say um, while i, so i is the, the value they're going to give us, is less than 1. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say i equals console dot read line. Um, and then just so we know that we've got to the end, so if they do give us the right one, um, we're going to say console 
no, not concurrent. Console dot uh, right line. Thanks. Just so we can see that the program is finished. Um, now, also, what we need to do is well, we'll um, we'll display the question. So console dot right. Uh, give me a positive integer. Integer, there we go. Um, and to make sure this runs, what I need to do is I need to give i a value that's not valid. So if I just say i equals 0, just to make sure this runs once, because i is 0, i is less than 1, this will happen once. We don't know how many times we might have to ask the user before they give us a positive integer. They might give us one the first time, or they might never give us one. So this is, uh, you know, these are, those are the extreme cases. So if I run this now, it's going to say, give me a positive integer. If I say three, it'll say thanks. So that's that's fine. That's the kind of ideal case, possibly the normal case. But um, what about if I don't? What about if I say zero? Well, it'll ask me again. And if I say minus one or minus two, minus three, and it'll keep going until I do give it a positive integer, and then it will stop. So we don't know how many times that's going to be. But while we're getting um, a, a non-positive integer, we'll keep asking. And then once we do, once i becomes positive, we don't we won't do this anymore, and we'll carry on with the rest of the program. So that's a quick look at while and how we can use while to repeat things when we don't know how many times we want to do it. We can keep going while a particular condition is true.